All right, welcome everyone. I am Paula Fever, the Zojo Developer Evangelist. And today I'm here to talk to you about enterprise app development and Zojo. Now I wanna encourage people to ask questions during the webinar. Uh, there's no need to wait until the end as I'll address the questions as I go along. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So what is enterprise application software? Well, it's used by medium and large businesses to solve problems. Now, this type of software is often highly specialized for the needs of the business. Uh, it's not something you're going to find, you know, on the shelf at Apple Store or Best Buy or something like that. Uh, they uh, typically will build the software themselves. The software can often be large and complex and built by lots of teams with lots of people on them. And as I mentioned, the software is often crafted in-house because it needs to meet a specific need of the business. Now you can contrast this with consumer software that is typically much more generalized, focused, and perhaps has a shiny, polished user interface. So where are some examples? Uh, you can think of apps that large companies need in order to operate. A lot of software, perhaps most software these days, is enterprise software. Accounting software, business intelligence software, process management, content management systems, customer relationship management systems. And you often see a lot of those type of apps are available from larger companies to purchase them and kind of install them in companies. Uh, everyone needs to track stuff like that. Salesforce systems, ETL, for extracting, transforming, and loading data often used um, to communicate between systems that don't otherwise know how to talk to each other. And databases are also heavily used with these type of apps. Now, I mentioned a database. Businesses love their data. So a database is always a component of enterprise software. And they also often want to support a wide variety of devices. Of course, if you've seen enterprise apps, you may notice that the UI experience on these devices is often not all that important. But being able to run on a lot of devices is important. And those are typically desktop, web, mobile, that sort of thing. In addition, there's always a need for back-end type software that allows for communication between different systems uh, and a consistent way for uh, things to talk. So if you need to get access to stuff, you can use a standard way to get access to that rather than kind of custom building it for each different app. REST is very commonly used in these days, and SOAP is something that was used a bit more in the past. So Zojo, what are some Zojo advantages? A lot of enterprise software is made using tools such as Java, Visual Studio, C Sharp, et cetera, et cetera. And those tools are certainly fine, uh, but they have their own issues. In particular, they are large, complex, and often can be a bit difficult to work with. Creating software with them sometimes requires more time than is expected, and no one likes late projects. Zojo brings to the table much of what you get with more common enterprise tools, but also brings other advantages as well. You can see here, this is what the Zojo uh, main user interface looks like. Uh, this is uh, one of our sample reference apps that's included with it. Uh, it's got a bunch of tabs open with uh, various classes and layouts and whatnot. So Zojo focuses on rapid development. It allows you to build apps that can run on multiple platforms very easily. And of course, Zojo is actively developed and updated. So if you happen to be using a tool that uh, perhaps you started with a long time ago and now isn't getting the love that you perhaps need, um, you don't have to worry about that with something like Zojo, which is updated regularly. Let's take a look at each of those things. So Zojo is lightweight and agile. I often joke that you can download, install, and create your first app in Zojo before the Visual, Instu the Visual Studio instu installer actually finishes. Working with Zojo is quick. This allows you to try out and test ideas and see what works more quickly than you can with other tools. And if you've used other programming tools at all, 
you're going to be pretty familiar with the Zojo language. It's obviously object oriented, but it's also type safe. In fact, Zojo is very similar to languages like Java and C Sharp. And with Zojo, you can work from a single IDE, again, improving the speed of development. So why switch between a bunch of different tools? We can use just a single one to create the apps that you need. And one that's particularly popular with uh, developers is that you can actually use Zojo on any platform. So if you have developers that prefer to work on Macs, uh, they can run Zojo on a Mac. If they prefer to use Windows, they can run Zojo on Windows. If they're Linux folks, they can run Zojo on Linux. Doesn't matter, Zojo can run on any of those platforms and create apps for other platforms. And of course, Zojo is multi-platform. And it makes native apps, and it does this for a lot of platforms. The desktop apps are native for Windows, OS X, and Linux. And if your company has multiple platforms, you're really going to appreciate this. One project can create the app for Windows OS X and Linux. So you don't have to build separate anything, really. You just got to check a few extra boxes. And when you build, you get apps for each of those platforms. Zojo can also make web apps. And the web apps can be deployed in three different ways. Uh, the first way is standalone deployment. And standalone deployment have standalone apps that are part of the standalone deployment process have what is called a built-in web server. So deployment for these is as easy as copying a folder. You can put the, uh, the app anywhere on any computer. It doesn't have to be a dedicated web server, so to speak. You can set these things up as services or daemons so that they can launch automatically, run in the background. You can also deploy web apps as CGI apps. And this allows you to use a full featured web server uh, as your web server rather than using it using the built-in one, which may make sense depending on how you need to configure things. Often Apache is used in conjunction with CGI Zojo app deployment. And lastly, you can take advantage of our Zojo Cloud secure cloud hosting that allows you to deploy a web app directly from the Zojo IDE with just a single mouse click. And Zojo allows you to create mobile apps. And a couple options here as well. You can create iOS apps. These are native iOS apps. They can be submitted to the App Store. They can be distributed using Apple's enterprise deployment. They're standard native iOS apps. And you can also create, uh, there's an example of what one looks like there. And you can also create mobile web apps using the, the web component. And these are apps that are designed to run on a smaller mobile device such as a tablet or a phone. Now, perhaps you've never heard of Zojo. Well, we've been around for a while, since 1998, actually. Back then, we were known as Real Software, but it's still the same company. It hasn't been like sold or anything like that, just a name change uh, a few years ago. Back then, when the product originated, it could only create apps for classic Mac OS, uh, which you may remember Mac OS 9, I think is what the last version was. Uh, this predates OS 10 and lots of other operating systems for that matter. But as you've seen, Zojo supports a heck of a lot more than that these days. We strive to keep Zojo updated, and we do so by having quarterly releases. This allows us to fix bugs quickly, keep the product fresh. And on top of this, we have a beta program so that uh, enterprise people can, enterprise licensees can join so they can stay on top of changes before they're actually released publicly. The rapid releases also allow us to stay on top of operating system changes. Uh, if you've been paying attention, you know that operating systems are getting updated very frequently these days, uh, yearly it seems, at least with uh, with Windows and OS X, yeah, a lot of the Linux distributions are also getting updated quite rapidly. And right now, Zojo supports OS X, and it creates Cocoa apps for versions 10.7 through the current version, 10.11. 
It also creates Windows apps that run on Windows 7 through Windows 10. And I can't possibly list all the Linux distributions that Zodra supports, but suffice it to say, it's quite a few. And on the iOS side, uh, 7, 8, and 9 are supported. Although 7, we may have to drop support for that at some point in the future, because it seems like almost all people that use iOS have just about upgraded at this point. Now, some people worry that they're already using specific tools at their company, so they can't consider using anything else. Well, that's OK, because Zojo can work with what you're using now. Uh, it works with source control systems. It works with databases. It can connect to a wide variety of APIs. With Zojo's text project format, you can use any source control system you want. You know, there's it seems like an infinite number of source control systems. Uh, these are just some of the ones I've happened to use that I could recall offhand, but there is even many more than this. These days, I primarily use Git and Subversion. Uh, but like I said, anything will work. We've actually done uh, a couple webinars on Git and Subversion. Got a couple links here. Uh, you can find them on the Dev Center. The, uh, the Git webinars are particularly useful for anybody looking to learn more about Git. They, uh, they cover Git kind of in general with a little Zojo tidbits here and there. But if you're, if you're just curious about using Git, which is a popular distributed source control system and pretty slick, I want to check those out. And what would an enterprise app be without a database? It would be nothing. That's what. And Zojo can connect to just about any database that's available. There is built-in support for a lot of popular databases, including Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres SQL, MySQL, and uh, MariahDB offshoot of it, and then also SQLite. You can also use ODBC and JDBC to connect to a wide variety of other things. And there's lots of drivers for ODBC and JDBC out there. So you generally can find whatever it is you need to, to use. Uh, I've connected to IBM iSeries and DB2. And I, let me tell you, you haven't lived and you created a Zojo app that actually connects to a mainframe. That, that's the ultimate in enterprise apps right there. Uh, Firebird's another database that's pretty slick. And of course, often companies have perhaps some legacy data or something sitting around and some things like Access and Fox Pro that uh, need to be accessed. Web services are popular these days, and for good reason. They make it easier for apps to communicate with one another. With Zojo, you can easily create your own REST web services using Zojo web apps. And this is something that we've had so many people ask about and want to be able to do. We actually did a two-part webinar series on it. Zojo can also consume REST and SOAP web services for uh, use by your apps. Uh, here's a link to the uh, webinar web services uh, series. And both parts are, are here. Recently, I've also written blog posts on how you can use the Zojo web app with Slack uh, to create a REST service that's used as a Slack bot, and even to uh, create a Zojo app that is able to send things to Slack, so post to Slack channels and things like that. Now, Zojo may have had its inception as a simple tool for creating Mac apps, but it has evolved quite a bit in the ensuing 17 years. Today, Zojo is a powerful tool for creating powerful apps. And we're going to talk a bit about the language, framework, integrations, extensible or extensibilities, and the fact that Zojo is compiled. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Zojo uses an object-oriented model similar to Java and C-sharp. So you won't have to learn anything new there. 
but Zilch is also a bit more focused, leaving out some more esoteric features that are rarely used and complicate the language. But still, Zilch has a lot of advanced features that are needed for enterprise apps. In particular, you may have heard of ARC, or automated reference counting. This has re recently got a lot in the press with its usage in Swift and Objective-C. Zotro has been using ARC since the very first version in 1998. And a big advantage of ARC is that there is no garbage collection process that has to periodically run, possibly limiting the performance of your app at the wrong time. So that's, that's kind of an interesting thing. Some of the other things that are on here, um, Conditional compilation allows you to have sections of code that only run for specific platforms. Extension methods allow you to uh, enhance classes that you don't necessarily want to subclass. Operator overloading allows you to use general language operators with classes and other things. And all this stuff is useful when you're building uh, often frameworks that are uh, used as a foundation for the apps, the larger enterprise apps that are being built. And of course, there's Pragma directives that allow you to control uh, performance and ways things get compiled and that sort of thing. Now, Zojo has a common set of frameworks that are shared across the various project types. So you can share non-UI, non-user interface code across your web, your desktop, your iOS projects. The UI code is specific to the project, of course. But the frameworks for the UI are all designed to be similar, making it easy to switch between them. Some other features here I'll just touch on. Uh, introspection is an incredibly useful feature. And again, it's often used for writing your own app frameworks. It allows you to inspect the classes and instances and other things that are in memory. Uh, introspection is actually used by the open source Zojo unit unit testing framework that uh, is available for Zojo. Other things that are available, there's uh, threading, of course, crypto, data formats for JSON, XML, regular expressions, lots of things for networking, sockets for HTTP, TCP, mail, stuff like that, weak references to handle, well, the more complicated, uh, not more complicated, but when you need to do something a little more tricky with your uh, your classes that are in memory and you, you can't rely on the ARC to handle that. And of course, I already mentioned the user interface stuff. And there's also a, a bunch of ways to do graphics in here. Uh, there's enough graphics stuff in Zojo, actually, you can make simple games using Zojo. And actually, non-simple games if you're, if you're into game program. But you're not limited to just using the Zojo framework. Zojo has the ability to call OS APIs directly for when you need OS specific functionality. There's even a couple of large open source projects that are available that wrap up many uh, common OS specific API APIs for you. Uh, there's the Mac OS lib project that, as you might guess, wraps a lot of Mac functionality, particularly uh, Cocoa type stuff. So it maps directly into some Cocoa things, give you direct access to things like that. And there's also a Windows library that similarly does that, that provides access to Windows-specific things that you may need. Zojo also has a plug-in software development kit that allows you to wrap up libraries written in C and C++ so that they can just be easily dropped and used with Zojo. And of course, if you didn't want to wrap them, you can just call directly into the DLLs or libraries directly but sometimes it's handier to wrap them in a, a plugin to make them a little more integrated. There's also a web STK, web software development kit, that can be used to integrate uh, JavaScript components. So you could integrate a UI components from jQuery or something like that using the web SDK. And of course, the regular stuff that you can interface with, you can call .NET code by wrapping that up in COM components. And there are even third-party products that allow you to call Java code. So a lot of way to get access to things that you may have pre-existing.
Now, Zojo is also extensible and kind of related to that is the Zojo Developer Forum, which is, we think, the best development community around. Uh, you can check that out at forum.zojo.com. Great place to ask for advice, uh, read about stuff, see how other people are using uh, Zojo. Uh, your questions get answered quickly there. Often, they may have even been answered before you ask just by looking up something. There are many third-party vendors that create libraries and controls and plugins that you can use to speed up your development. And there are lots of open source projects. I mentioned Zojo Unit before, but there are lots of others. And we have a page on our Dev Center that lists uh, all them in uh, the kind of group by category, so you can scan through the list, but there's, there's a lot of them on there you can take a look at. Zojo is a compiled language. It's not interpreted or just in time compiled. It's just compiled. And the apps are all native for the platform. There's no runtime that you need. And this gives you speed and security by having native, native compiled apps. The desktop apps use specific UI frameworks, of course. Uh, Windows desktop apps use the Win32 library for their UI components. OS X apps use Cocoa, as I mentioned earlier. And Linux apps use GTK. There's also web, of course. And yes, our web apps are also compiled. So your source code is not visible to those using your app. And the web app is actually a compiled app that runs on the server that's communicating with a JavaScript framework that's running in the browser, all using HTML5 asynchronous communications. iOS apps are also native. And as I mentioned before, can of course, because they are native, be submitted to the App Store or any of the, of the Apple ways that they have for distributing iOS apps. All of them are available to you. And that is using uh, the Cocoa Touch framework as well. So native controls, all native. Sojo apps can be 32-bit or 64-bit. And 64-bit apps, before I, I hit the clicker, before I finish my uh, train of thought there, 64-bit apps are actually using the LLVM compiler, which you may have uh, heard is used by other languages such as uh, Swift. And before we dive into the IDE features, I should also mention on the list of compile things is Zojo can also compile apps for Raspberry Pi, which use the ARM processor, uh, the same type of processor that is used by iOS devices, actually. This also uses the LLVM compiler. And Raspberry Pi and the ability to compile to it provides a great way for you to take advantage of these small, inexpensive computers. And because they use the same uh, desktop and web projects, because you're just checking another box that says, hey, I want to build something for Raspberry Pi. Often, projects you've already created will just run on it. Of course, the Zojo IDE itself has lots of features that can help, make, help you make projects more quickly. Uh, there's project templates that allow you to set up a standard project with uh, some built-in code, and you can just kind of start from that. So if you have a standard way to make in-house apps or anything like that, you can have a template set up and everyone can work from that. There's IDE scripting that essentially allows you to write code that controls the Zojo IDE itself. There's build automation, which provides a variety of ways you can control the build process. You can, of course, I think I mentioned this before, share code between uh, your Zojo projects, web to desktop, uh, desktop to iOS, that sort of thing. The code editor has autocomplete and syntax help built in, which makes it pretty easy to type stuff. Uh, you get little help guides along the way, and you can look up things, jump into the online help, that sort of thing. For UI design, there's a concept called containers for all the platforms that allows you to essentially bundle in a bunch of UI components into an all new component. And it's a great way to make 
user interfaces that are highly reusable. All right, well, that was a lot of information. I know, went through quite a bit. Here's just a little bit more. First, you can head on over to the Zojo Dev Center to find out more about Zojo. That's developer.zojo.com. There you'll find everything there is to know about Zojo. This includes reference guide, user guide, technical documents, videos, much, much more. Also included with Zojo are over 320 example projects. So by all means, take a look at those things, open them up, run them. If you have a question about how to do something, there's probably a pretty good chance there's an example project sitting in there that already is made that'll show you what you need to know. Webinars like this are a regular occurrence. And there's already recordings of over 75 that are sitting out on the Dev Center that you can go and read through the topics. They're all categorized, and you can watch ones that are of interest to you. Zojo does offer training if you need to get started more quickly on your projects. And if you have a long flight or a drive coming up, you can pass the time by listening to the Zojo Talk podcast. And in fact, episode 21 was just posted earlier today, and its topic is, surprise, surprise, enterprise consulting. And every year, we have a Zojo Developer Conference, which we call XDC. And in 2016, our XDC conference is in Houston, Texas. And registration is open, so you can check out the link, read more about that and see if that's something that you might find interesting. All right, I think I reached the end, and I just, as I'm getting to my Q&A slide, I'm realizing that the little window that shows Q&A did not appear on the screen here. I don't know if I have any questions or not. So let me see if I can find that. All right, I don't see any pending questions, so I'll just, no, nope, there we go, that's the right tab. No, nope, nothing at the moment. So I'm going to point out to people that I can be reached at paul at zojo.com. So if you have questions after the fact, or you review this, or you grab Zojo and you download Zojo here at the URL, zojo.com slash download, and you have questions while you're looking at it or testing it out, by all means, contact me. I'm happy to talk with you. I can answer questions via email. Uh, I've built lots of enterprise apps myself using lots of tools, and I can certainly talk about that to anybody that has any questions on how Zojo can help with that process. All right, well, I don't see any questions at this point. So again, feel free to shoot me questions afterwards if you come up with any. And in the meantime, I want to wish everyone a great evening or day, wherever you happen to be. Thanks for watching.